Broadcasting live from the loading ready run orbiting underground moon base, it is still the Lurcast. Twentieth anniversary edition. Yes, with uh, myself, Paul. And me, Graham. Hello. Yes. Also, we're not broadcasting live. <laughs> no. Why is that part of that? <laughs> I don't know. It always was, though. Well, once we started doing that, I mean, initially, the Lurcast was just it was just you and me. Right. And I don't think we said broadcasting live. I mean, it came up in conversation in, I want to say, the first episode. Hey. Hey, I'm, uh, I'm Paul here. And this is Graham. So uh, this is a, a new thing we're going to be trying. Uh, this is a podcast, what the, what the kids call it, I think. We hear they're very popular on the internets. I don't know. It's, I think we still have it somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I honestly don't recall. We're going to be talking about podcasts <laughs> next episode. All the podcasts next episode. Today we're talking about the end of Lur. Of Lur. Well, the sketches. We're talking about the year of Lur. The year of Lur. So, yeah, we should probably talk about what led to this yeah what what why we stopped doing sketches <laughs> yeah i mean they're so difficult uh <laughs> i mean we had let, let me tell you before it got to the point of uh doing the big sort of announcement that we did and of running a kickstarter uh we did a big announcement at our pax west panel mm. that year with like a slideshow we are kickstarting the last season of sketches now, what we mean by that is, uh, oh yes, right, sorry, aka what I've called a year of lure. <laughs> uh, what we mean by that is the, uh, the weekly, there will be a Loading Ready Run sketch every week. Uh, we are going to kickstart the final season of that. Um, during that period of time, I'd skip we'll feed them, check on Friday nights, continue as normal. This is the final season of a new sketch every week. And there's a couple of different reasons for that. Um, the big ones are, there's a lot of things that we want to do. We want to try and do new kind of, new videos, and new like mini web series. And like, we have a lot of different ideas. We, we were, everyone was really chill. <laughs> I was like, please bear with us until we explain everything. It's the end of sketches, calm down. We'll explain why. Yeah, I, and uh, I, everyone I'm, was very nice about it, which is good. I'm kind of sad, you know. In in retrospect, I mean, it, it was would have been you know too early, but in retrospect, you know, I'm sad that we weren't at a time where we could have done like, you know, the YouTube video. Like, we're stopping. You know, like the like. Oh right, right. Big loading YouTube ready run is over. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, um, well, not really. No. So we started doing the sketches and as we talked about in the first episode the original like goal was to build <laughs> build up an audience so they'd watch our travel vlogs when we went backpacking through europe um which you know sure but so we started doing the the sketches and we set ourselves that goal and we were doing the sketches every week and we kept doing something every week you know obviously in the earlier seasons some you know there was one or two weeks that weren't necessarily like a sketch per se yeah. some of them was sort of like graham's video art project while well, he's trying to also go to university but you know as as we went on through the through the seasons it was definitely like you know a full sketch or an episode of hustle or something and we also had started doing all this other stuff you know yes. starting with unskippable and then into enn and crap shots at this yeah point. by this point we were doing crap shots we were doing uh, uh checkpoint we w were doing uh gosh what else in friday nights <laughs> friday nights we were doing at this point you know we were doing a whole lot of different stuff and we had a real serious introspective chat about the sketches because as it turns out if we had to crystallize it mm. it's that they are the biggest outlie of effort for the smallest return <laughs> of anything that we made yeah because there's a yeah unfortunately yeah. there's a certain practicality to the whole thing yeah we like them we like doing them but it was that you know every single week it's like okay we need totally different costumes and props and set and different people and we have to write a different script that's totally not the same as the one from last week and everything and 
it has the least impact in terms of, you know, viewership. And this is profitability, to be frank. And this is, you know, pre, uh, this is before we had like the Patreon or, or uh, the sort of view, direct viewer support stuff that we have now. I think in a lot we were, of ways. I think we were on Patreon at this point, no. but we didn't know. No. Oh. We didn't do Patreon until after the Kickstarter. Oh, right. Of course. Yes. You're totally right. Yeah. 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 Of course. We launched that immediately after the Kickstarter year. Um, um, but yeah, so, we didn't, we didn't have the streams as well. So like our money was coming in only from doing stuff like Friday nights and checkpoint. And yeah. And like, like a little bit of like ad revenue and stuff. Very but, small. Yeah. Spoiler ad revenue, even on YouTube now that even now that they're sharing it is very bad. The cognitive load <laughs> yeah <laughs> that that uh the sketches put you know that idea of sort of always kind of always feeling a little bit kind of under the gun mm -hmm. i think probably the sketches suffered in the sense of we got to get this done quickly so that we can get on to you know the other stuff yeah uh that that you know never feels great yeah when you're when you're sort of uh, not able to put as much time into something as you think it probably deserves because there's other stuff going on. Yeah, and not that I don't think we did good work in those seasons. The I guess this is like season, I don't know, six or seven through ten. Like, I think we did really good work there, and there's mm -hmm. stuff in there that we're really proud of. This is Clinically Insane Clyde's Colon Corrosion. It's an authentic prison recipe developed by an actual crazy person. 25% pure capsaicin. It's won our most bathroom distress award 12 years running. One teaspoon is guaranteed to turn 30 feet of small intestine into six pounds of angry pink soft serve in 10 minutes or your money back. Those awards are rigged. <sighs> Perhaps Captain Brainburn's mnemonic fugue is more your style. Like, I don't think that we, you know, we're just sort of like, you know, rattling off stuff just to sort of meet our weekly quota. But at times it kind of felt like, like you just said, it was like, oh, right. I've got to write something. Okay, shoot. Um, you know. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, is this a sketch? Great. Okay. Things cool. that might have been, something. you know, that, that, that nowadays would be better suited for like a crap shot or something. Yeah. Uh, like they didn't really have enough meat to them to make a full like five minute thing and there are sketches that we wanted to do that we had sort of like a concept for N never fully scripted but there's times when we had a full concept for something that we just couldn't do because it's like okay well we need to to do that we need the logistics you know for it or just this like kind this kind of location or we need this specific costumes or we need this particular technology or something uh but we we can't get that between now and friday right so we can't so it's like so, okay well we'll put it off till you know next week or next week next week next week. yeah but there was always this we you know we called it the treadmill it's not that's not a new other people have used that term but we, you know we were on this sort of sketch treadmill and we yeah, and, we we felt we we felt we weren't doing our best work and it was possibly preventing us from doing our best work in other spheres and it got to the point where we're or we can't keep doing the way on the way it is mm. if we don't make a change not only the sketches, but like everything is going to, we're just going to be like burned out on everything and we're just going to stop everything. Yeah. Uh, and obviously we didn't want to do that. Mm -hmm. We were evaluating that the sketches weren't, you know, weren't making us money, frankly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they were being done, you know, for our own entertainment and for the fans. But both of those things have value. But, but. Both, both those <laughs> things have value, but uh, they weren't making us any money. So it was like, okay. Let's do a Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. Let's do so. I mean, you know, frankly, put the money where the mouth is, right? Like, we'll say, we'll try to uh, sponsor another year, a final year, and we're very clear that it's like, even if this is popular, this is it. Yeah. But we'll sponsor another year of things. If the Kickstarter doesn't make it, that's cool. Yeah. We'll just we'll just stop the sketches there yeah uh but if kickstarter makes it that will be not only an indication from the community that they find the sketches to be a very worthwhile product mm -hmm. but also it will be a uh give us sort of financial permission 
to spend more time on the sketches that yeah. that that okay we are getting x amount of money so you know we we can choose not to take other projects so that we have time to do the sketches because we are actually being paid for those yeah and so yeah we did the 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 year of lure it was extremely su successful yeah. uh, as a kickstarter we launched it in september because uh, we would have announced it at, at PAX, and the year started in the following January. The first being ways to waste the Kickstarter money, yeah. I believe, yeah. Yeah. We felt like that was pretty fun and we did to be fair we did you know it's we didn't go crazy with it but we were like hey, we i guess some, we have a little bit of a prop yeah, budget for we this can episode do some cool stuff, yeah. yeah yeah we can buy like that like the 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 money boa i think was a very <laughs> very good visual prop not actually that expensive on yeah. amazon yeah so we asked for one hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars canadian mm -hmm. for that thing which well thinking back on it now i think we asked for 70 didn't we uh, and then James we says made, the, and then we made James says the goal was 135 Canadian and we ended at 186. Oh. Maybe I'm thinking how it would work with US or or that was like the initial and then we cuz we had some like stretch stuff. I'm not entirely sure to be honest. Anyway. But you know like even thinking of it now <laughs> it's like well I know it was 24 2015 2014 but like how many people was that meant to support for a year? Hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, at that point, it was, I think, you, me, and Kathleen were the only ones who were doing full-time. James might have been. Or maybe James was as, as a result of this. Uh, I was still part-time. Yeah, James was still part-time. Yeah. And yeah. it was, yeah, I'm looking at the the Kickstarter page right now. It was 135000 was the goal. We made 1865 basically, with uh, 2,253 backers. Nice. nice. Yeah. We had, you know, various... Uh, incentives we had some like digital stuff mm -hmm. we had a t-shirt which oh. graham was wearing there uh we're using the the starburst design from the loading ready live show yeah, yeah which if you've been listening to these podcasts you will have heard us talk about yeah we had some higher level um incentives which were like people who can getting people actually like you were like come to the moon base and hang out with us for a day mm -hmm. um which i think three people did and uh, that was fun. And we had a like, tennis ball thing where you could like sign a tennis ball. And then oh, we the had a whole thing where we like shot fun. tennis balls at us and stuff. The tennis ball thing was a lot of fun. We are now, after <laughs> a really long time. A really long time. Sorry. Getting around to firing tennis balls at ourselves. Cam, prepare your butt. Okay, so I was here today anyways because I thought we were shooting a thing. And apparently now this is the chance for my balls to get collided or something. Um, so I guess I live here now. Anyway, this is Wonderwall. Today is gonna be the day that they're gonna... <laughs> Keep that guitar low! So how? I don't realize what you're gonna do. I don't... Ow! Anybody feels the way I do about you now. Oh! So we did that and... And it, and it was successful. That sort of gave us the um, the license to um, be like, okay, let's do this last year. Um, from a business perspective, as a little side thing, if you were ever doing a Kickstarter, if you have, as an example, $165,000 yeah. uh, coming in as a lump sum, mm -hmm and you are either a private individual or a partnership, that's a problem for tax purposes. Yes. Because suddenly you have this huge chunk of money that you then obviously have to pay taxes on. But it isn't like, but then, you know, obviously it's not a continual income, so you lose a lot. Um, and so uh, this was also the impetus. It was like, okay, this makes sense now mm -hmm. to uh, incorporate. Yeah. So, this, we went from Bionic Trousers Media to Bionic Trousers Media Inc., uh, which, you know, it's a small three-letter change, but 
uh, is a huge uh, administrative chain. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it adds uh, a whole bunch. You know, you, you do. There's some, you know, there's all sorts of there's like tax savings and various other things. But it also means, you know, getting uh, lawyers and accountants and stuff involved. So it was a whole process. It's one that, you know, we are still figuring out. But I should say we we did have an accountant before. We did. Well, we had but, a book. We had a bookkeeper before. A bookkeeper and an accountant. But then now, but now the, we have a lawyer. But the accounting is entirely yeah, it's totally different yeah. and stuff. You may have heard about some of that uh, when we talked to Bijan Heather because mm. uh, uh, I mean, well, not immediately, but down the road we brought in <laughs> Bij to help us with that stuff. And they know us now, but initially there were some very funny conversations with the accountants and the bookkeepers. So they'd be like, my, "What is this? Why is this a business expense?" And it's like, my, "Well, <laughs> my favorite thing was explaining the Kickstarter oh, to our to again, our accountant." Again, they get it now, but yeah. at the time it was like So explain the Kickstarter to the accountant because of course they have to know where the money comes from. So in for instance like Kickstarter is weird cuz it's taking money from all over the world mm -hmm. uh, to one place and then they send it out. So is it, and so, I mean, one of the part of the service that Kickstarter provides is that you then like, you don't have to pay the individual country's tax on the like 10 bucks that somebody put in, you know, it all goes to Kickstarter and then you, you would just pay it as if Kickstarter is paying you. Mm -hmm. The accountant was like, uh, so this is people buying stuff, you know, buying stuff from you. And we're like, uh, not real. I mean, we've got T-shirts and stuff, but this isn't really for that. And so they're like, so like, what are they give? What are you giving them? And we're like, nothing really. <laughs> they're just supporting us. <laughs> they're just so people are just giving, giving you this money. And it's like, yeah, I mean, yes. yes. Like we've said, we're gonna make videos that they get to watch, but like. But there's no like they don't like own the videos. It's yeah. Just sort there's of, no actual yeah. thing. Which yeah, it took a little while, and I mean Patreon is sort of the same. Yeah, it took a little while for them to work it out. We were like, you know, uh, when public broadcasting runs a pledge drive. And yeah, like, that yeah. kind of yeah. It's like okay, you know how like at the fifty dollar level you'll get a tote bag, right? It's very similar to that. And they were like, okay, sure, yeah, all right, and that that uh -huh. that that helped. Yeah, and so it's fun because we we get um, uh, our our accountant, which the, who are who are very good. Mm. Um, we had you know quite a good relationship with them, um, and even with like the with the uh, owner of mm -hmm. the of the or the partner in the company or yeah. whatever. Um, but he was like, you know, I'm not really equipped to deal with all this stuff. So and so it was this thing where you sort of got we basically got you know to pass to the youngest person. <laughs> Yeah, at the at the company who was like, you know, hip with the internet. Yeah, to do it. Who, by the way, I believe now is himself a partner. Yeah, at the company. Yeah, and and has since passed us to again the youngest person <laughs> who's hip with the new internet. Yeah, <laughs> it's it, hey, that's great. how it has to go. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that's yeah. There's there's a lot of fun uh, sketches we did in that final year oh yeah oh I think we tried to sort of do some some like greatest hits you know bringing back characters yeah we did like the warriors of darkness coming back uh hello you there peasant what year is it uh 2014 by the blood-soaked mandibles of veil that means yes ragnar five long years we spent in that place of eternal damnation <clears throat> oh i think i swallowed a mothball wait Wait, are you saying you've been in my closet for five years? Well, lost in a pocket hell dimension in your closet, yes. We did, um, I mean, I'm, I'm, there, was, there was 52 of them. Uh, I mean, it, it all culminated in another Loading Ready Rumble, which was lots yeah, of fun. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> this is when I black out. I really thought you were gonna kill us in there. What? But instead, you just chopped all that wood. But uh, we felt like that would be a good a good way to do that because the first rumble had been after like what season three, five, 
something like that. It was early. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Those pizza boxes may be square, but your man KB sure ain't. Throwing pizza ain't no way to put it down. You pathetic dirtbag. Do you think I'm gonna let myself be shot down by the likes of you? Lucky for me, K to the B keeps his pimp hand way strong. <laughs> or maybe it felt like it was early. It was, it was 11 years of these sketches. So yeah, basically it was a weekly sketch comedy show that ran for 11 seasons, which mm -hmm. was, you know, it felt, it felt good. Like it felt like it was a good, uh, I felt like the stuff that we did in that season, you know, was was good i thought that went really well and and it's nice you know again we, we've talked about that like because we do stuff on the internet and we're you know especially now largely uh audience funded yeah nobody can tell us to stop doing things to shut yeah. things down but you know at a certain point things come to an end mm -hmm. and it's nice you know like like when there's like a tv show that you're watching yeah and they get the chance to you know, end it instead of just being canceled. It's always kind of nice. Yeah, like, I like that. It's it's nice that we were able to to do that and, and feel like there was sort of a bit of a closure. Yeah, they didn't tell us. To that portion of our history. Yeah, they can't tell us to stop, but this was very explicitly telling us to, to do this, to yeah. keep going, which was nice. Um, some other things that we sort of offered as part of the the whole Kickstarter package was, you know, uh, podcasts. And again, we'll talk about podcasts next episode, but we were like, it was on time podcasts was something that we specified, which was a weekly tap, tap conceit and a biweekly lure cast. There was a thing I remember talking about, uh, after the sketch or, and sort of in that period where, where, you know, it was like, oh man, when we were doing all the, the sketches every week and we were doing all this other stuff, how did we keep up with everything? And of course, the truth is we didn't. No. <laughs> no. As the uh, things will say, you know, that podcasts weren't on time. Things weren't happening when they were supposed to. We were always scrambling on stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, was bad. <laughs> um, and we, there was too many, too many rewards and too many tears. The Kickstarter was terrible to, to like administrate. It was a bad idea. <laughs> Uh, and sort of like next time we do one of these things, it's going to be a lot more streamlined. I, yeah. Well, also, I, like at the time, Kickstarter's system wasn't that like it had opened in Canada, like not that long before. Right. And yeah, their system was like you couldn't have you couldn't like mix and match things in a useful way. So you had to have like different tiers oh, for like if you want right. a poster and a thing, but not this. If you want this, so and we this, had to offer tiers. so many different levels. Yeah, of those, like it was the T-shirt the dvd the t-shirt and the dvd yeah <laughs> a poster a t-shirt and dvd and a poster a t-shirt yeah. and a poster but no dvd uh, yeah it's not cool we did eventually get the dvd well and the blu-ray out the door eventually <laughs> it took a very very long time that happened many years after the kickstarter ended unfortunately yeah, yeah. that's how it, it was un it, that was unfortunate but uh another thing that we offered that we sort of said we would do as part of the Kickstarter. And this is weird that we wrapped it in with this to be like looking back at it now, it, it's strange, but we were like, and we'll do streaming. We'll start streaming. Cause well, you've done uh, a little bit of like magic streaming. Yeah, we, we did do, we had been doing streaming already. Um, uh, James and I had been doing the weekly magic streams uh, in various point places around the moon base originally it was like way out in the just the main room and then we finally like moved the computer into one of the offices and we, you know so we did like a weekly magic stream uh i think temple of the lava bears predates this when we did the the fin the live finale of lava bears i actually don't remember because uh, the temple of the lava bears was a joke from commodore hustle so, so it at, a hundred, at hundred and seventy thousand. Uh, D and D miniseries Temple of the Lava Bears. Jerry will create a full Temple of the Lava Bears play experience for the crew. Okay, and they will play through in through it in all of its fiery, death assuring glory over wow. a period of weeks. So yeah, it, Lava Bears was a stretch goal for the Kickstarter. I, no memory of that. That's amazing. Okay, but, I mean that wasn't a lot. That was an edited thing. But no, but the finale was live. Oh okay, yeah. 
So had we done, had we streamed anything else? No, not no, other than Desert Bus. Um, I believe the only streaming we did on a regular basis was Magic. Did Th- There's a chance we did other things from time to time, we but tr- not, certainly not regular. We tried to stream a ping pong tournament once. Right. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. And that was definitely before we started doing doing this. Yes, yeah. probably, yeah. So anyway, we were like, yeah, we'll do we'll do streaming. And I don't know if, I, I don't know exactly how sort of it got to this point. Certainly, we didn't like advertise that this is what it was going to be. And I don't think anybody expected this. But w- when we were like, okay, let's do the streaming. And we were like, here is a slate of shows running our channel like a TV station. And I think that the viewers were sort of like, whoa, what? That's so much yeah. more than we expected. And I guess it was <laughs> more than we expected. I don't remember. I, I don't remember anything about the discussions that led to that being how we were going to do it. That we were going like whole ass into streaming with like a full mm. schedule of shows but well, that, I, that's I, what we did i mean i think it i i don't i also have no memory of this conversation no. i don't remember where we how we came to it or where it even yeah how it even begun but i think i mean realistically it was probably a bit easier than anything else we could have done because we did cater it to everybody having their own show yeah so anybody n- no one person was on the hook for more than really one stream a week yeah. with the exception of i think you and i because we each had our own show and then we had the magic stream yeah so like nobody was streaming at at most more than two times a week mm-hmm. which you know i mean to this day we still kind of run our twitch channel like that yeah right like it, which I it think worked a, i think it's a very healthy way of doing it because it means that you know people aren't that's you don't have a single person streaming for like eight ten hours a day uh you know yeah it it means that the obviously like all of the you know if if one person was doing that to the viewership and community support that we have then they'd be making bank but uh whereas we have you know 15 people here but uh, and yeah and you know as as is our want you know uh we yeah we started doing this the twitch streaming in you know, a, a a completely different way than most people were doing Twitch streaming. Yeah, I don't know. Not if, really knowing that we were doing it wrong. I don't know if we've <laughs> I don't know if we've really hammered this home enough over this is episode seven of of this. I don't know if we've really like really driven home how consistently we d- do things uniquely and differently. And I don't mean like oh we're so cool and special because it's not always to our benefit, but almost all the time we have found ourselves to be operating in a way that we think is best that we believe to be the best path forward that we believe to be the best way of doing things that is seemingly not a way that anybody else does it and And we find ourselves butting up against you know technology limitations or you know or personal limitations from other uh other parties being like well wait why are you doing it that way and we're like oh because of these reasons these very logical reasons that we've decided are important and then people go oh no one else does it that way but i mean i guess we'll try it's and it's not only that like we do it in the way that seems best to us it's always like well this seems this is clearly the obvious way to do this right (laughs) <laughs> but apparently it isn't obvious to other people. So when we're when, like, for example, when, you know, years later we'd go to TwitchCon, right? And they'd be like, okay, so, you know, are, are you coming to TwitchCon? And I'd be like, uh, yeah. And they're like, okay, well here, sign up for the form. And we, uh, I go in there and I'm like, okay, but th- it's not just me though. There's like other people who host shows on this, on the channel. And they're like, what? I'm like, yeah, it's not, I'm, it's not just like, it's me and I'm the streamer. Like, yeah, I co-own the company that has, operates the channel, but there's lots of different hosts, and they're like, "Oh, I, be, I guess we can get you a plus one." And I'm like, "No, sorry, I don't think we're sort of. A, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not explaining this properly. They just had nothing in their system, which is weird because it's not just us. It's like a critical or, role, right? <laughs> or Penny Arcade, for example. Like, there's lots of channels now that have that, but for some reason they were just like, I don't or just, understand. I mean, or just little things like you know Twitch." doesn't send out uh online notifications uh if you have already have gone online in the last four hours 
Like yeah. you have to, it has to be more than four hours between the last one. So if we go live and have a three hour stream and then go down and go live again with a different stream, that one will not send a push notification because. Because, because. They, they assume that you were either doing a longer stream or, uh, you know, if you went down, then that was just like a glitch or something. Anyway, it's just weird, you know, yeah. weird that that's how things seem to work often. Streaming was a success. Yeah, it went very, very well. Like it's even like from the from the very beginning, it was it was uh, it was super fun. It was new to a lot of us. I uh, <laughs> when we started, I don't know how I had the time to do this. When we started, I was I was watching every single stream that we that we did uh -huh. to make sure that everyone felt comfortable that they were you know doing productivity immediately. Yeah, well, I just I'd want no one like James and I had been doing the magic streams, but like most of the rest of us. We have performance experience, but yeah. it's a very different thing, right? Yeah. And, you know, uh, so there was a lot of, you know, a lot of early on a bit like, you know, hey, tr mm. maybe try doing this sort of thing or whatever. And I was just like, I was just like, I, 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 I hope we're doing a good job. And, you know, obviously I don't watch every stream we do now because <laughs> there's too many things, but there was too many things then. But I just wanted to make sure that everyone was having a good time and doing a good job and that we were you know putting out a good a good uh a good product which i think we were and i think we still do but yeah it was it's it's hilarious in retrospect to me that the streaming which is now such a huge part of our sort of the the pie chart of where our effort goes and our income arrives from uh that it was just it was like a stretch goal in the kickstarter for this season of sketches it's just, it's very yeah. strange it was like oh and we'll and we'll do streaming and it's like and we'll start you know another division of the company is basically what it what it ended up there's being people listening to this there's probably some sort of like bingo of like you know loading ready to run whoopsies into a, <laughs> <laughs> a whole new business model accidentally yeah well, I mean, and we and we mentioned the Patreon, right? Because Patreon right. hasn't so, been around. But after the season of sketches, or I mean, I think so, it was partway through that, we were like, well, what what do we do when this year is over? And then this money that we have from the Kickstarter, uh, a lot of which went, by the way, to like fulfilling prizes and taxes, as you mentioned, and all that stuff. We're like, what do we do with... And so it's, it's Once like, we've used this... Do we keep running like new Kickstarters yeah. for other things? Uh, or yeah, maybe we can do this, this Patreon thing. Yeah. We, we did talk about, make it a consistent thing. Yeah. We did talk about like, so do we do a Kickstarter for like the next year of not, not like another year of sketches, but do we do like, and now it's this annual Kickstarter for the, whatever other stuff we feel like right. saying that we do. Uh, but that didn't, that didn't feel right. Mm. Um, uh, some folks operate on that model, like Rift Tracks runs like a, they do like right. an annual Kickstarter for like. Or, I mean, lots of companies do that in the sense of like pre-ordering for the next yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. But we were like, that doesn't really, because it's going to be, it's so all over the place. Like we don't have anything yeah. defined that we can be like, you know, that. And then Patreon was was just sort of coming up and we were like, oh, that makes much more sense. And you could do Patreon by like by content item. Right. If, uh, if that was your thing, but because of the way that we operate, again, it didn't make sense. But you could also do Patreon by month, and so that's sort of what we're doing. It's you know and basically like we we like that we can make this stuff and put it out, and that it's free for people to watch. Anybody can access it. But if you want to PBS pledge drive us five bucks a month or however much you wish to back us at, uh, then you can do that, and it's been working out fairly well. You know, a lot of people use Patreon. Uh, and, and, you know, and it makes a lot of sense to do this, especially like artists and things. They'll have Patreon as a, you know, you can. Oh, yeah. We put, don't use the platform. Put, you can put in certain amounts of money to get access to their, you know, to their uh, art or to um, get all sorts of various benefits and stuff. Mm -hmm. When we were talking about the Patreon, we were like, we don't want to, you know, from a, a purely. uh selfish point of view we want as many views in our videos as possible yeah we don't want to cut off certain people from being from watching our videos because then less people will be watching our videos we sort of came down to like we're gonna do we're, we're here's the patreon we want to be very clear 
you don't get anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but our thanks. And, uh, you know, we, we, we have had sort of little things that we mailed out every once in a mm -hmm. while. You know, we were like, yeah, that's that's it. We're not going to do uh, any any fancy uh, uh, pledge tiers, but we we hope that you uh, you know you uh, we hope that you like our stuff and wish to continue. And you know, luckily, and and thanks to uh, our uh, uh, wonderful support in all different ways, that has worked. Yeah, <laughs> and of course, that also applies to the um, uh, the Twitch channel. Which yeah, you know, has has had lots of people support us through there. Which is, and it's been it's been really important. We've we've talked about this before as well. In that, um, the vast majority of the money that pays for all the people that work here and the rent and the internet and all that stuff, primarily the the majority of our money goes directly to all mm. the staff here. Not um, a lot of money actually spent on keeping the lights on, especially with LED lights. Yeah, it's nice. Isn't it's not it? that expensive. Yeah. Uh, running all the computers is a lot yeah. more electricity. Um, but, uh, you know, we've talked about sort of like the pie chart, right? And there's like a little bit that's merch. Um, you know, there's like a bigger amount that's YouTube because YouTube ad revenue is still, it's not nothing, but it's still not like astounding. Uh, more than that is probably like currently at least is, is like contracts, like stuff with, you know, Wizards of the Coast primarily. But the two biggest sort of chunks of this pie is Patreon and Twitch. And that's super important because like if Patreon explodes or more likely their CEO does something stupid uh, or if Amazon decides, uh, you know what, Twitch actually sucks and we're going to just. I was going to say if Twitch's CEO does something, does something stupid, stupid yeah, <laughs> uh, then that would be potentially catastrophic. Uh, if that was like our only sort of source of income, it would still be, to be clear, very, very, very bad. <laughs> but uh, but you do. Yeah, you got to you do try to diversify. Yeah. By by diversifying, by not putting all of our eggs in one basket, I do feel more confident that, you know, we can. It's It's been different the whole time we've we've been operating. Right. This is, you know, 20 years and it's it's always been a little different. And I just hope that we can. You know, stay ahead of whatever weird internet nonsense is going to happen. But currently, it's been working very well. I remember actually, I think right after the sort of year of the Kickstarter year and starting the Patreon, I think we were, we were on, we we got on, we were invited on like a radio show, CBC I, Radio. Is it? I don't know if it was CB, CBC or uh, Steve Axers. I don't know some some local radio. Thing. Well, we definitely went on CBC North by Northwest a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now the Victoria Group is nearing the end of a Kickstarter campaign to raise financing to produce one more year of their three to five minute sketches. With just a few days to go, they've already exceeded their goal with more than one hundred sixty eight thousand dollars pledged so far. And I'm joined this morning in studio by Paul Saunders and Graham Start from Loading Ready Run. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. And is that how you, how you, you pitched it, essentially? A, a donate to the Kickstarter campaign for our final sketch season? Mm -hmm. or, or, okay. Yeah. And, and do you have a sense of who is donating? I mean, you've got a great response. Do you, do you have a sense of who, who is ponying up the, the catch? Well, we, um, I mean, our fans are incredible. We have a, a really vocal fan base uh, that we talk to on our forums and on all sorts of places around the internet and so it's wonderful to see people actually you know talking about how excited they are about kickstarter and how much money you know they put in or how much money they're hoping to put in uh and so yeah we we've got a, a pretty good idea of uh all the different types of people who are uh paying money to try and see us for this last amazing season yeah we've got about 1910 backers so far uh who donated on average, eighty-eight dollars each. So they had the same sort of people just give you money. Yeah, talking about <laughs> yeah. the the thing and stuff, and we're talking about how this is like Patreon and stuff is mm. this this sort of exciting, fun new you know funding thing, which is actually, of course, a very very old funding thing. You know the the Patreon patronage. They're li it's literally artistic patrons. They're like uh, it's honestly, it is exactly the same as all of you have decided. I want. Loading Ready Run to be able to keep doing whatever nonsense they want to do. <laughs> and I'm willing to give them five bucks to do that. And and, and it's a wonderful... Thank you. So, yeah. I mean, just to to talk about this for a sec, we've spent a lot of 
the, a, a good portion of the time at, at Loading Ready Run, uh, Bionic Trousers Media, um, doing contract work. And we still do some contract work. And I've done a lot of contract work, um, you know, when I was a, a web developer and stuff. And you spend a lot of time hustling for work. Mm -hmm. And your, you know, the kind of work that you do is whatever work you can get, you know, what, what, or what you can convince the client that you want to have. Um, and when, but when you switch over to this, the, the Patreon thing and, or, or the, the sort of audience funded thing, the calculus for doing a project sort of becomes very simple. Creators talk about this all the time. Like what would be, what, you know, I can't, make the kind of videos I want to make because the videos I want to make get a thousand views and the whatever drama about some stupid celebrity get me 50,000 views. Yeah. So I have to do more terrible videos that are kind of, I don't like. Yeah. But that doesn't matter for us, you know? I mean, obviously we like to get, it's fun to get more views and get more people looking at our stuff. But fundamentally, you know, we get to make things if that we like yeah and if the self-selected group of people who are supporting us uh who then they've selected themselves to be people who like the same things we like as long as you like that stuff you're the only ones we have to uh sort of make happy yeah <laughs> and that's a very cool thing like it, it means that we have a, a lot more flexibility of what we can do. We can, you know, decide to do a project that and, and and not have to think about it's like, OK, say we want to do this. How, you know, is this something that is going to, uh, you know, make money? Yeah. Uh, but that doesn't really matter. It's more is this something that people will like? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and is this something that we like? Uh, that's the consideration, not where are we going to fund this thing? Which is great because that's always been sort of our thing is like, well, we think this is funny, so we're just yeah. going to make it. And hopefully enough other people will find it funny that it will it will work. And so, yeah, being able to like we're, we don't like I would be lying if I said I didn't care about viewership numbers. Right. Obviously, that's important because that that is direct feedback on. Yeah, people are watching and enjoying this. But if there's something that we really like doing that doesn't get as much viewership as another thing that we also probably like doing, we're not going to go, oh, well, we're going to stop doing the low viewer one and focus on doing the high viewer one because, you know, that's it's like, no, no, we, we still really enjoy this. And there's people watching it. So we're going to keep doing that because we like it. So, and you know. yeah, and, 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 you know, the that that people support us and sort of doing all sorts of different things, uh, acknowledging that people don't, you know, you, not everyone likes everything, mm -hmm. which is totally cool. Uh, that is, uh, that, that's super fun. So uh, thank you very much for allowing us to do that uh, for 20 years. <laughs> yeah. I want to briefly talk about one other thing. Uh, before we go to this episode's interview, because mm. this also is something that launched during this period of time. And it's another thing that people very much enjoy. And so do we, uh, which is Quirp Line. Yeah. You're listening to Quirp Line here on QWRP FM. Quirp Line this week is brought to you by Joss Ross's Boss Moss Floss. Delicious candy floss made from all natural sphagnum moss. It's Joss Ross's Boss Moss Floss. Try it with sauce. Yeah, this was so. This spawned out of Desert Bus, actually. Right. Which is that Desert Bus? Gosh, I don't know. Four, five. One of the ones at Moonbase Mark Three. Yeah. Uh, Alex did like a radio call-in show called like Derp Line, and it was just people would like pretend. People in the room would like pretend to phone in and be like ask him silly questions, and he would give silly answers, and that was sort of it. And like a lot of the answers were punch yourself in the face. Yeah, punch yourself in the face until you pass out. No, no, that was what Morgan always gave as advice whenever people would ask, right. ask it was doctor. Right, like dear, dear doctor. Dear doctor whatever, Morgan, yeah. yeah. Uh, that, the dear doctors thing, that's from Desert Bus 1, by mm. the way. That's going way back. The, the people in mail time are still like, dear doctors loading ready run. Yeah, that's yeah. from first Desert Bus. Anyway, people were 
absolutely randy to have more <laughs> more derp line on that on that desert bus because that's sort of how desert bus memes go is that when there's a thing of a given year then everyone's really excited about it but alex wasn't always there and so people were like oh do more of this and so i was like okay well i can't i i want to give the people what they want but i don't want to bite alex's bit so i'll create like a rival thing like i can't host derp line i'm not alex so and uh quap was a big thing that year so i was like okay right. i'll host quap line we tried quap line at night oh hi we tried quap line at night it was marginally successful and now we're now we're having we're doing quap line in the morning which was different i don't because i had never seen Alex's thing, <laughs> which is the other thing that happens during Desert Bus, is that like, you know, you get these like weird, uh, sort of referenced memes. Yeah, that the chat sort of tells you about, but you never saw in the first place. So yeah, it ends up being like this weird, like twisted game of telephone. Yeah, so they were like, oh, it's like a radio call-in show. So I was like, okay, I'll do, a, I'll do, a, I'll do a radio call-in show. We'll call it Co-op Line, and we did whatever that was. I don't remember. I think we did, I think we did it once. And then uh, we combined it. We combined Quap line and Derp line into Quirp line. That's where yeah. the name comes from. Hey, Paige. <laughs> do you want to? Do you want to introduce uh, Quirp line? Quirp line. <laughs> this, this, start this is happening. This, this is real life. This episode of Quirp line is brought to you by Jack Plank's Plank Flank Blank Shank. <laughs> and then that became like a thing that we did. Uh, at desert buses and i swear every year i was like man we gotta we gotta do this as like a thing that we do mm. and i was i don't remember which desert bus it was it was one of the ones at viatech um where uh S skeletor came in on a segue it was the one of the funniest things we've ever done in terms of like i couldn't see i was laughing so hard ladies and gentlemen <laughs> skeletor <laughs> I'm sorry, it was a little late. There was a wrecked helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> was, the trap was terrible. Did you come over here on a Vespa? <laughs> it was a And then after that, I was like, okay, really though, I like gathered, because it generally speaking, it, it had sort of developed that it was myself and Alex and Kathleen and B. and Ian mm. were the ones doing this. And I sort of got everyone together and was like, we need to do this as an actual thing. We need to do this as a podcast. This is too funny. We should, we should be doing this. And so we did. And the sort of the process for it is literally that we... I'll get into the room with a bunch of microphones and we sit down and we throw ideas around. It's gotten a little bit more complicated since then, <laughs> unavoidably because it's very self-referential and we have to make sure that we're getting the references correct. So we have an extensive board of notes, mm. but um, it's less edited improv than maybe it was initially, but it's more just sort of like, Rather than we get together and we do a writing meeting and we write out some scripts and then we come in later and then we record the scripts, it's we come in and sit down and we just start throwing ideas around and then it's like, oh, yes, good, record that. And we just start sort of going and we record stuff. And so like a 20-minute episode of Corp Line is like 90 minutes, sometimes more of like recorded. Right. So we, we literally just hit record and go for like, an hour and a half two hours and are like throwing the ideas around event you know like okay what you know we want to have a we want to have some sort of interview thing who are we interviewing this person sure and then we like make up whatever like business they might be from or we'll be like oh wait let's bring back that person or whatever and then like uh what do we want to do now do we want to we want to throw to richter you know maybe we'll uh let's oh let's uh, let's have the weather this week what's a funny thing we could have sadie casperson be doing you know and we'll just sort of it's very, very loose in sort of the development process, and it is a lot of just like making each other laugh, which is great. Uh, though we and then no longer include the actual laugh breaks in the episode, and we can talk about that creative process at some other point. And then it gets sort of very tightened up in the edit, of course. Yeah, and then we cut out all all the bits where we're you know re redoing lines or we're discussing about things like that. Which unfortunately, uh, I mean that 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 process. You know, which works really well for mm -hmm. for Quirpline, uh, obviously makes the recording process uh, 
faster than it would be or, or it makes the the creation process like if you had to write out the entire script beforehand yeah that'd be hours and hours of work pre-production and production takes a lot less time but but it makes post production but it makes post production take <laughs> take a lot more a lot time, more time. <laughs> uh because obviously you have to you have to pare it down and and often redo segments if it, it you know uh not redo the uh the jokes or anything but but um you know, maybe re-record something. Yeah, if it, I mean, if somebody's like talking during the thing. at time of recording, you know, Corp Line season three is still in post production, and part of that, there's been a, there were actually several reasons for this that I don't need to drill down on, but one of them was we recorded it remotely mm. during the pandemic, and it was very difficult to to confirm integrity of microphones, and so there's just mm. a lot of lines that like everyone's got like different microphones at home. Yeah, there's a lot of lines that need to be re-recorded for technical things, or there's some stuff that's just like you know lines need to be recorded because like person wasn't feeling it at that moment because we weren't all in the same room trying to make each other laugh you know yeah it's you won't be able to tell in the final edit because we are re-recording those moments but it's just sort of like you know it's like hey we need a little bit more energy from this line or we you know we we we, we need like this thing we still had a great time doing it we were still cracking each other up but it was a different kind of it was a different kind of vibe so i'm looking forward to doing more stuff in the room we're doing the re-recording in the same room so there's that um but yeah core has been uh, fantastic we've done like uh live variations of it at pax before speaking of the sun i hope everyone's having a great day out there today in scenic innsburg sweet home alabama <laughs> we've done obviously the you know various desert bus episodes um all the all the amazing uh graphics that featherweight has come up with when we originally were talking about the character of <laughs> Tugger Nuts, the like detective character from a series of beloved children's books. At no point did we prescribe that he was a goat. We just we asked Featherweight, can you draw the book covers for these books? And we sent him the audio and we're like, here's the description. And he decided that Tugger Nuts was a goat. And not like an anthropomorphized goat, just, <laughs> just a goat. And it was the funniest thing. And so now, yeah, now he's now he's a goat. I I feel like that's one of those, like, you know, Mandela effect, Berenstein Bears things where, like, people will be like, yeah, you said it was a goat. Yeah, obviously then, you did. Yeah, you, goat. And then you go back and listen. And it's like, no, they never actually said Nowhere that. Nowhere is it specified. <laughs> maybe maybe now in retrospect, but in the episode where we first start talking about those books, is never specified that he's a goat, and I love it. What can the participants in the costume contest win? Good question, Graham. The winner of the costume contest will win a copy of Tugger Nuts and the Pearly Orchid, signed by author Antoine Graffito. Sorry, Tugger Nuts and the Pearly Orchid? I'm actually not familiar with that one. It's actually a rare UK version of Tugger Nuts Wrestles the One-Eyed Champ. I thought the name was obscene. <laughs> Oh, I don't see how, but I'm not from Europe, so anything else going on in the arts this week, Edith? No. Anyway, uh, I think we can possibly uh, go over to Richter with traffic, or rather Ian, and also Corey, for the interview portion of this particular episode. So enjoy that, and we'll talk to you again. Well, I mean, in just a few minutes. I, what a weird throw. Uh, now the interview. And now we are here for this portion of the episode where Paul and I are joined this time by Corey. Hello. And Ian. It's your boy. Yeah. And uh, now we're going to talk to you two about your time thus far with Loading Ready Run. We've already spoken with Beej and Heather about their process for uh, moving out here. During which, actually, I looked up a very early email that mm -hmm. you had sent me. Oh. oh. Uh, of just sort of like... Hey, uh, do you wanna do you wanna do a thing at this anime show? Yeah, because Beach was saying that it, it was via you that all all this happened. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I could say that I'm one of the instigators, and we I can actually pass that responsibility off to Corey as well because I, you I think were the one who introduced me to the whole desert bus thing, which got this whole uh, mire started. Yes. Ah. Oh, okay. So it was because of desert bus first. Yeah. Ian had some uh, exposure to your sketches and I think some, would it be escapist content? Probably. And I watched Desert Bus in the lab during finals 
projects weeks at school. So from Desert Bus 2, and then I showed Desert Bus 3 to Ian, and he made a poker face? Yes. That was for three. Oh, boy. Made yeah. a what? A poker face... Uh, Filk, I guess. I guess Filk is the best word. Yeah, it was uh, it... the desert bus. Yep. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. His name is James. Hands covered in socks. Get right, my, get right, my. You can ride my desert bus. We got to get some money. Wow. Which was... I do not. I have no memory of these things. Of I'm, I'm glad because they're very embarrassing now. In 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 hindsight. Oh, we'll 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 insert it here so if, that if we can, can find it, yeah, so that people can see it. But yeah, I remember that email and that uh, that, that that initial meeting that we we, we did. Uh, that was a, I think, Anime Evolution. I can't remember yes. the year though. Yeah, this twenty ten. Uh, this email is from June two thousand nine. Ooh. Yes, greetings from across the internet. This is Ian Horner. I'm writing to you as you appear to be the leader of your particular outfit. As a fan of your work and a member of what could be a, quote, rival comic troupe, I've heard you and your crew are going to be coming to Anime Evolution, and I thought I'd approach you with a modest proposal. Uh, and then, yeah, you, you're uh, at, at the time, it was with the 404s, mm -hmm. and uh, just sort of pitching, hanging out, and doing a thing at, at Evolution. And yeah. what's weird is that I don't have any of my responses, but I have all of yours, as if I have been responding, so mm -hmm. I have to assume that I was <laughs> I was responding. Graham did some improv mm -hmm. with your troop. <laughs> and I, I remember this part very distinctly because this is one of the weirdest meetings I've ever had with another human being. Uh, uh, I believe we met on opposite sides of an escalator. Yes. Uh, you were going down, I was coming up, and we ended up walking backwards for at least a good 10 seconds before we decided that this is probably dumb and dangerous. Let's get off and talk. Yes, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I do remember. I should say from a from a further desert bus. Maybe the, maybe it was desert bus three. This would have been uh, two thousand nine. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there was someone had me do a uh, Billy Mays impression. Yep. Billy Mays here for Billy Mays. Are you looking for a pitch man for all your your amazing just random crap product pitching needs? Then you need Billy Mays. And then it freezes. And then in front of that, that's right, folks, Billy Mays for Billy Mays. <laughs> of the lyrics to Jonathan Colton's R.E. Your Brains. Yes. Mm. And then Ian put it to the music. Yes, this was just Billy after. Mays here. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Billy Mays here from the office down the hall. Hi, Tom. Billy Mays here from the office down the hall. Good to see you, buddy. How have you been? Things have been okay for me, except that I'm a zombie now. I think I think that that was also the remembering that it's bad to do large amounts of Billy Mays early in the run. Yeah, it's hard on the hard on yeah. the throat. Mm -hmm. But yeah, definitely that was like, oh, cool, a viewer because it was it's Desert Bus, Just right? Like, guy. look, a viewer sent this cool thing in, and it wasn't until I don't know years later, years later, that it was like, oh, heck, that was Ian. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's it, there is that sort of recurring thing of like making the connections between there's like this person who you know sort of in the real world, this person who's online, and then at some point you go like, oh, that was the same person. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a problem I have often, or I had it often until coming here with uh, shake hands with danger. Danger. Right. Something that had come into my... It, it, it's, it's the internet. Things just filter out. You don't know where they come from after a while. But damn, that was a, a heck of a uh, slap and track. Thank you. I had a lot of say. fun with that. And I hated watching it because there's like some guy sticking his hand in an axle. Oh, and I'm yeah. like, ah, oh, yeah. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> yeah, don't Slaps, do that. Though. Yeah, sure. Yeah, no, it's, it's great. But yeah, the, the, this is one of the most... One of the most violent safety videos I've ever seen. <laughs> it was horrifying. <laughs> Glenn doesn't want his friend to sneer at him for being overly cautious. I mean, what? So, wh where did things go from there? After so, we 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 did we did the anime a, anime evolution, and yep. this was at the this was at the at convention you, center downtown. Yes. Yeah, this yes. was right. the year that they had the big convention center. Yeah, and then we went to an after party at a hotel, 
and talked to you and Kathleen, and you invited us to Desert Bus, Ian and I. So that was Desert Bus 4. Right. Graham, I'm standing out here outside of turn... Well, there are no turns out here, but we're waiting the return of the first desert bus in this race, and it looks like it's going to be about another few hours, so back to you. Corey tried to club me during the auction. Well, if he didn't try to club me, I, I revealed one. There was a top hat here, and I picked it up. Nice she had Now, had Beach already come out to a previous desert bus? No, no it wouldn't have been. No. Desert bus four we invited you to. Yes. Which would have been the first one at Moonbase Mark three. three. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, right. And so then you came to Desert Bus? Yeah, and that was uh-huh. a, yeah. a, again a, a scary experience of uh, this oh, this impressive uh comedy company on the internet is inviting me out to the, their studio. I'm I, I am blown away by the studio that exists and <laughs> Uh, it was it was a little intimidating, to be honest. It was very you know the, you get the constant uh, refrain of "Don't fuck up, don't fuck up" in your head as you go through it. And it, 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 welcoming group, and yeah, have never felt more comfortable acting with people and and interacting with people on on a camera at that point. Oh, good. Yeah. It's nice. I mean, obviously, uh, you don't don't want to be like super intimidating, but I think that side is probably better than you getting here and being like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's these people suck yeah it's, mm. this is just a piece of crap <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah you're terrible people so then we retreated uh tac- tactically back to alberta mm-hmm. and <laughs> later i think you were at c2e2 the calgary comics and entertainment expo yeah yeah and did another improv thing with us and a comic book artist i think named jam that beach knows oh god yeah i think that was that year yeah we would have done something in calgary and I recall there was another one where we did a different anime convention at SFU. Yep. Where we were staying in the the tall round towers. I think that might have been just like the next year of... Uh, of Anime Evolution? Of anime, or was that the different... Because they had warring factions. I think we, may, we might have talked yeah. about this in the last episode. And, I don't know. Uh, but they yeah, had there's like, a lot of anime conventions. There's like a splinter group in Vancouver. It, it yes. happened, yeah. Anime Evolution kind of went under. Then there was like Anime Revolution. Then it's like, no, they're not the real Vancouver convention. It's the other one, and I can't remember its name. I don't know either. <laughs> Anyway, I'm 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 not in that. I'm out of the I'm out of the so game. We even just pulled that eject as yeah. well. <laughs> so so at some point, you know, you were you were in Edmonton, mm-hmm. and at some point, you all your you, friends you, left. You, you decided you decided that uh, yes. you you were well. From what I understand, like your plan was to move to Victoria. Yeah, we started it, talking a big game about moving. <laughs> And then, and then, Bij and Heather beat you to it. Yes, it was sort of how it happened. And another friend. Yes, yeah. We, we we'd been doing the shows uh, together for a number of years at this point. You uh, people from Lur seem to be very uh, reliable people to act with, uh, to do improv with at these things. And I thought, okay, let's let's keep this sort of thing up. And we'd done that first desert bus. We did the second be- desert bus where we you invited Bij out as well. And mm-hmm. you know, great people to interact. Is that the one with. where you were all staying at our place? I think when I was when I was like sort of quasi house sitting for my parents, the yep. first year we the first year we were staying with you at your place. A second year, I think we went came to uh, October Mansion. Okay, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. graciously put us up for two years, which felt ooh, oh. fancy. I just I just remember the 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 year where it was so snowy. <laughs> it was cold. And it we was were like so cold, and the place we were staying this is where my parents live now. Uh, was like up a hill. And they didn't plow it, and taxis wouldn't come up there, and any of our vehicles were trapped. So we had to call a taxi to the bottom of the hill and like walk down, and just all of us. I think it was, I think it was, you two and Kathleen and myself and Johnny. Yep, standing yep. in a huddle, just like, like penguins. Yeah, literally like penguins, being like, "Please, the taxi arrive soon, please." Mm. My first experience ever hearing anyone use chains on a on a uh, <laughs> paved road. <laughs> Which it was so bad. Our our our, our relationship with uh, with snow <laughs> is a little different than you and Edmonton, I think. And that's part of what played into the decision to come out to Victoria. Was every well every year it had only been about two at that point, and became three and then four. But every year before coming out for Desert Bus, I would take a photograph of what it was like in Edmonton, and the one that always comes to mind is three foot ruts of solid ice. 
that had become that way because the snow had been driven through and then frozen. And it's it was a wasteland coming from Edmonton. And coming here is usually beautiful, except for this little skiff of snow that somehow causes the entire apocalypse to occur in this town. <laughs> we don't handle snow no. well. <laughs> People every year, people are like, I don't, I, I've never been, experienced this before in my life, and I don't know how to drive in it. <laughs> Another friend of ours from the improv troupe, Dan Ross, who was living in Calgary, moved with his wife Manny down and their kids mm -hmm. to Langford. Yep, and started doing some a little bit with you. Of course not, dumbass. It's laundry. I need it back by six. Well, you, you can have it back now. You look different. I. Absolutely do not. Isn't this Luigi's Laundry Lounge? Do I look like a Luigi? And yeah. then uh, Beach and Heather moved down, and we were like, we'll get there yet. Mm. See, the big problem was I had a job, mm. and uh, it was... That is a problem. It, well, yeah. It seemed like a good job at the time, and so I, I wanted to keep it. And uh, at some point, I just decided if, if we're going to make this move, it just has to happen otherwise it's not going to happen trying to find a job remotely in victoria is not going well and so let's let's roll the dice see what happens and we can pick up the pieces in one way or another and uh got permission from my my workplace to work remotely for a couple of years mm. which meant uh having two 27 inch imax sitting on we can get to that later <laughs> But uh, yeah, we, we thought, let's, uh, let's put a bunch of stuff in storage. Let's start getting things ready. And I think by mid-2009, it was that we were... Uh, we, 2014, sorry, yes. Yeah. Mid-2014, we'd actually uh, sealed the deal. And uh, had, had, uh, I was just looking through my emails then as well. And we actually put the place up for sale where we were living at the time. Mm. Tried to sell, didn't get any buyers. Tried to rent, got very little nibbles and things like that. We were hoping that we would go down to PAX and then just drive back with everyone to the island and be like, we live here now. Ha <laughs> ha, <laughs> isn't this funny? <laughs> and that didn't happen. But when you did finally move out here, who did you tell? No one save for Beej and Heather. Did, did you tell them? Yeah, yes. we okay. had plans yes. to stay with them. Okay. Yeah. Because it looked like you had, because you surprised everybody. Mm-hmm. Because nobody knew you were coming to the moon base. Get out. <laughs> ah! What? 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 Where the... What? How? No. How did... The, how the fuck did this happen? What? What? No, but you're here. Oh my god. What? Oh, we live here now. Ah! Congratulations. And so we stayed in Beach's attic for uh, a few months. Oh, uh, that place got real warm. It really did. Uh, thankfully, it was it was October at the time, so it wasn't too warm. But uh, mm -hmm. that, that first night, uh, we were staying on his air mattress and rolled over in the middle of the night. And I've got these pointy elbows that just pierced a hole right in the middle of the air mattress. <laughs> and we sank to the <laughs> yeah. floor. You popped the air mattress we with your too, elbow? Yep. Too tired to do anything about yeah, it. That, that, that's how tired we were. We just <laughs> we settled into the ground as the air mattress deflates under us and say, you know what? We'll deal with this in the morning. Yep. And then Beach returned the air mattress to Canadian Tire without a receipt and got a new one. Mm -hmm. And how, it was. How does, he can't keep getting away with this. No. Uh. How does he do this? So after a few weeks of, of, of doing layout in Beach's attic with two IMAX sitting on this uh, yoga ball, we mm -hmm. eventually find a place to live here and move in. And it was a great place, actually, for a while. Yeah, I was still working but, at Beamdog and I was sitting on the end of the air mattress doing my like, all right, team, here's your tickets. So you were also <laughs> remote yes. working uh, for Beamdog that was it's in Edmonton. In Edmonton, mm -hmm. yes. But I, I, th I think the idea behind the, the secrecy of it was just that we'd been talk we had been talking about it with our friend group in Edmonton for years and never anything coming about it. I thought, well, if we're... Everyone's like, you, yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course, yeah, you're actually yeah. going to come out now. Sure you are. So we'll get you. Well, it we was didn't... great, but it was like, yeah. why are you? It's, what? It's Because it was, it was like October, yeah, right? So we're like, why are you here? And we didn't come out with any expectation that we were going to be immediately hired for uh, for work with Loading Ready Run. We, yeah. We figured, you know, we'll come out. We're going to hang out with you guys because we're, we're, I think we're friends at that point. Mm -hmm. And of course, we're still going to work with Desert Bus because we've kind of got a relationship there. But beyond that, it was like, okay, let's let's play it sleazy. It wasn't explicitly, uh, 
you know, come to Victoria and you can mm-hmm. be part of Loading Ready Run. Yeah, please. Again, if you take anything away from this podcast, that is the lesson. <laughs> yeah. We've, there's been a lot of different, there's a lot of differing lessons about how to get involved with Loading Ready Run over the course <laughs> of this podcast. I think what we can learn is that there's no consistency. Uh, yeah, but but the 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 climate and the the town or you know there are various mm-hmm. other aspects of it were the attraction, but then also the idea that not only were some your 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 friends from uh, yes uh, from Edmonton and moving over here, but the idea that there would be there's you know some sort of community involvement thing exactly. Um, although ironically. Something that's always been sort of weird with Loading Ready Run is we're not actually that tied into like the Victoria, like local arts community. No, oh, that's... no. Yeah. Because we're sort of on the internet for most of our stuff. Uh, so there's a, that kind of odd disconnect there. For but... a period of time, we were doing a lot of stuff with the Phillips Comedy Night. Single most important sketch in North American comedy. Uh, I think this was before you would would, would have would have come here uh, that uh, Wes Borg hosted, and you know he was keen because it's like oh these people are really good at sketch stuff and we get like video content into the comedy night to greater diversify so it's not just stand up and improv because mm. that was really all he had at that point right oh, and so wow. it's like oh and these you know doing this they bring a different sort of vibe to it and that's cool um, but no one. None of the local comedians or improvisers, we didn't know them, they didn't know us, no idea. You know, like the the closest we got to any sort of recognition was Monday Magazine, which is sort of our alternative arts magazine. Uh, they had their annual M Awards, which is just sort of, again, they're like local stuff. And they had one, they had a one year it was like favorite local filmmaker or something. And But the thing is that the, the, the you could vote online. And so we were like, Hey viewers, why don't you go do this? And so they f- flip and voted for us, and we have we have the award the old, somewhere. Yeah, yeah, the old community choice being the most person who has the most friends at the thing <laughs> award. It's not currently on display. It's we we're like, well, this is glad we got this, I guess. But yeah, and we went to the M Awards presentation ceremony. We were like, great, thank you. And I think that they I think a lot of people were like, who the hell are they? Mm. Uh, so. <laughs> When did you uh, first start sort of being involved with like Loading Ready Run, I guess, as separate from Desert Bus? Because you were involved with Desert Mm -hmm. Bus before sort of Loading Ready Run sketches and weekly meetings and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it was uh, after we moved, we were still in, well, we, you were still involved in making uh, the sketches at the time. That Mm -hmm. was uh, the the last season, I believe. Yeah, 2014 would have been, would have been the the, the year of Lur. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, spoke about that earlier this episode. Yeah, and and of course, talking with Beach, we learned, okay, here's here's the secret is you come out to the Saturday meetings (laughs) and this is where all the filming gets done and where we decide who's doing what. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, I I started picking up the boom and uh, pointing it in people's faces. That's that's always the yeah. Always we we always need boom. the boom boom operator. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and it's always good to have. And yeah, you know, yeah. You have you got the the yes. I I was gonna ask. Yeah, can you remember the first sketch that uh, either of you were in? We've been doing this for everybody. Oh my gosh! Uh, per the wiki, uh, the first your first appearance in a loading in. A, Loading ready run thing. God, was my first appearance actually that Commodore Hustle where I appear for a second as we're uh, going through the uh, the costume racks? Hey, you guys want to have a Halloween party? That's actually not a bad idea. <laughs> right. And, and and then I am never mentioned again <laughs> in that season. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. Wow. I feel like it's got to be. We we acknowledge that on camera in that episode, right? Where we're like, no, I don't think who, we did. No, I I, no? I think the, the 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 explanation that the fans have come up with is that the, it's an Ian costume that someone's wearing for a second. <laughs> oh, that's really yeah, good. Yeah, it was just like a, a weird Easter egg because I'm assuming you were there helping out with the filming, mm-hmm. and we were like, it would be funny if when they're because it's cutting to different people. Yeah. There's just 
some person who's not there. I think we used Beige once or twice like that as well as like random guy <laughs> at the end of the video mm -hmm. that doesn't, it's like, shouldn't be there. So Beige, can you take care of that? What? What? I, um, I thought we were gonna, you, I, I don't, I don't work for you. Um, so I'm just gonna. Yeah, we had the, in a, I think it was an episode of Hustle or something. It was like, oh, and then Beach can do this. And it just cuts to Beach, who's never been mentioned before. And he just goes, I don't work for you. And then stands up and leaves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so strictly speaking, both of you, and this, this video has caught a number of people, is uh, the Desert Bus Trailers. Oh, yes. From Those November 2010, where we used iMovie's inbuilt trailer making templates to make a series of various movie right. trailers. And strictly speaking, it was a loading ready run update, but it was filmed at Desert Bus. So yeah, both mm. of you actually is the 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 Desert Bus wow. trailers. The earliest thing I remember is the tennis ball fulfillment thing for the Kickstarter. Eat it, Turner. Oh, that was in the butt. Ah. <laughs> Ooh. Mm -hmm. Where um, yeah. we brought my crossbow in right. to do stuff with that. Is that all you got? Uh, no, we have some more. Oh! <laughs> and then when we moved into our first place here from Beach's attic, uh, we filmed a crap shot with me and Cameron. We filmed the first part of it. So, what do you think? Where, where's, where's all our stuff? And then a year later, I think, filmed the rest of it. Okay, you two, I think I see what you got going on in here. You want to reduce clutter, you want to downsize, streamline the place. Oh, right, because we wanted to get it, like, empty, because... Yeah. Right. For a while there, it's just like, whenever anybody moves, we're like, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. What can let's, we do with an empty space? Yeah, let's just yeah. quickly do something before <laughs> you, you move in. For Ian, the first non-desert bus related video <laughs> or sketch because i do have me good memories of those desert bus songs and yeah because you there's the desert bus trailers mm -hmm. in season seven season eight the tale of matt wiggins mm -hmm. of course this is the tale of crewman matt wiggins buses so down on the desert of strife wait what mm -hmm. season nine desert power season 10 the desert bus rap my name is ian and i step to the line rocking verse after verse of unscannable rhyming couple where the engineers don't mess with us or this is all you'll see during desert bus right these are all all desert bus specifically but back in season eight the very best of room tone to order the yummies best of room tone collection for the low low price of 59.95 Simply tie your order and payment to a raven and release it to the south wind with Guy's blessing. The raven will know the way. Which we did at uh, one of our meetups in Calgary. I guess it says it, it's, it's, it's voice only. Mm -hmm. uh, this is also Beej's first appearance in a similar cameo. So perhaps... Yeah, we just yeah. snagged a yeah. couple of clips while we were... Per meeting. the wiki, this is one of Ian's favorite sketches. We did a series of Lurcast episodes where people talked about their favorite sketches. And from the episode with uh, Heather, Beege, right. Ian, and Paul, Ian's picks included uh, the very best of room tone. Yeah. I'm happy to be here again. It's been a long time since I've done a Lurcast. It has been a while since we, especially the three of us, have been on a generic Lurcast. Yeah. 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 We have the other, we'll have that coming up near the end of the season, won't we? Domestic quality. But uh, uh. everyone else has had their chance to talk about their their favorite five yeah favorite five yeah it's it's march right march mm -hmm. madness it's march, march madness, madness. So the sweeps right your yeah. favorite five sweeps have to is play happening each other. We're, we're, we're bracketing all of our favorite we're talking about our favorite sketches today yeah favorite uh, loading ready run sketches to be specific we, yes we've already gone through all the jokes previously about who, what who are we could be. for the people who it's are not very watching good question. the youtube video that's a good point yeah and free candy which is the one that you mentioned earlier yeah <laughs> and shake your hands and the tale of matt wiggins and the rumble there you go. Two, I like things that I'm in. Mm -hmm. No, fair <laughs> enough. I'm uh, pulling up Corey's filmography as well. Has it been updated? Does it say I work here now? Yes. 
No, it is. Th- <laughs> <laughs> this is not up to date. The, the the blurb is not up to date. <laughs> She's currently most frequently seen co-hosting I Horner. Wow. <laughs> so uh, no to answer that question, Corey. Your first non-desert bus related sketch, because again, through season seven, nine, ten, there's desert bus ones, uh, would be the wire. You hear that? He's on to us. But how? We sweep this place for bugs every week. Hey, you guys didn't see anyone suspicious come in here, did you? No. 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 Hmm, okay. Which is the season 11 sketch where... Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Uh, Cameron is wearing a wire talking to Beege and Paul? Yeah, I, I'm like the... You're the, the, the mafia mm-hmm. guy. Yeah, or or Beige's, I think, and then I'm the assistant. Or anyway, what, yeah. whatever. But yeah, you're like one of the the like uh, uh, behind the scenes people because like at the end it cuts to them, it it cuts to like the supposed van. Yeah, the or agents. whatever. And they're the getting agency, like makeup done or whatever. And they're, and they're like getting their makeup done and everything. Cause... Yeah, the agents are James and Ian, mm-hmm. and they're giving yeah they're giving the assignment to be like okay you got to go in there and get this recording and then it turns you know there's like a camera and a boom and it's like oh could you could you <laughs> incriminate yourself again you popped your peas you know yeah. or whatever it was. I like that good meta humor. Yeah, it's good stuff. One of my favorite parts about working with Loading Ready Run in those early times when we were doing you know a weekly sketch was that we needed a lot of new scenes. Uh, areas to shoot in and i got a great introduction to all the non-usual places you're going to see in victoria like <laughs> christmas hill the uh the, the ruins of the military base out by the uh yeah. oh the ocean. yeah right when we're all, filming rapid fire all the yeah. places that you can uh get into without you know people asking questions exactly <laughs> yeah. several the, the parking garages basement yeah, of the yeah. victoria arts center it's Fascinating stuff, but <laughs> not the usual sorts of tours you're going to get. It's true. Yeah. This is places that allow us in there, mm-hmm. or that are just sort of open to the public, or whatever we can get away. We're not with. supposed to be there, but nobody actually bothers to check. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah a lot, of, lot of good stuff that early in, in that those early days for us. Uh, I, I remember also getting into working behind the scenes a little bit more. Mm. Uh, with you as well uh, early on was I'm still looking for uh, more regular work here and uh, doing editing for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the first projects I remember was the, was it the Magic Con? Not Barcelona. Where was that? Utrecht. Oh, wow. And I remember putting together a music video. Yes. Of Th- this was, from there. It was, um, it was Modern Masters GP Weekend. And they had concurrent events in Utrecht and Vegas and Chiba. Yep, that would do it. Somewhere in Japan. And uh, yeah, they sent us, they were like, here's behind the scenes footage from all three of them. Put this together into a sizzle reel, basically. Mm. I had forgotten that you worked on that. (laughs) Wow. And then. And you also ended up doing uh, some of the work on like uh, the the vods and stuff. That's right. Yeah, originally. Yeah, vods. And uh, after Ray left, I picked up loading time as well. For that. Right. But yeah, the vods I think is really where I've got uh, left left a mark, at least with the development of Axe Hand. Right. Initially. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The the internal. Just in case you're in case you're curious, because you hear us talk about this sometimes. The uh, we have an internal tool that we use that. The the original version was was developed by Ian. Mm-hmm. Over the years, it has passed through various people <laughs> being charged of development. Corey's worked on it. Yep. Uh, Joe Trollo's working on it currently, and uh, it's called Axe Hand, which is because it chops things up. But it's uh, that's the name of that internally. I don't know if we, it's ever been named on screen, but that's Jer's character from the basement <laughs> crap shots. I I don't think i am heard you right. You did. I explained everything over the loudspeakers. It's very simple. I want you to chop all this firewood. Now, I don't want you to fight over it, and it's going to be brutally difficult, but it's going to help stop me from freezing to death. It's the mm-hmm. guy with axes for hands. Yeah, chop all this wood. You need to chop yeah. this wood. Even though he has axes yeah, for yeah, hands. Do you, know why he brought, do you know why I brought you here? Yeah. yeah. Yep. The other tool that you created which i really enjoy <laughs> though actually there was there was two the spider-man one yes i don't remember why that was it's, that was makes web M's. yep right the spider-man one makes web ha 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 converts yeah 
And the other one is that uh, in some instances, when we're recording in here, in fact, you won't see it, but this is an example of it. Yes. We're recording on multiple cameras right now, and the way that we do that, uh, because there are there are other ways to do this. Keep it to yourself. We know. <laughs> But we're recording th three in this case, but generally we'll record four 1080 feeds on a 4K field because that's how the resolution adds up. Uh, and then in the edit, we'll sort of jump around the thing. The computers have gotten strong enough to handle it now, but at the time, handling f four 4K feeds that were just zoomed in onto a quarter of each of them was troubling. And so what we needed to do was figure out a way to take the 4K video and just chop it into four 1080 videos one for each corner of the stream that we have mm. and uh for that purpose ian made a, a ffmpeg like front end yes. whatever gui called dr doom with the the the, the doom dudes as he Doot, pleases yep. icon and i was like why is this i was like the spider-man making webms i get ian why mm -hmm. is this one dr doom well it splits up the fantastic four because <laughs> it splits up the fantastic four you missed yeah. one you missed aunt may I do not remember Aunt May. She makes pie for you. What? <laughs> she makes MP4s. I have <laughs> no idea what this one was. I don't think I ever interacted with Aunt May. Damn. Yeah, I, did, I, I didn't get much use. I think this is really good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. So that's 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 been that's been very useful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, now thankfully the computers, generally speaking, can actually handle. Yeah. Thanks, M1, <laughs> Apple Silicon. Mm. But yeah, there, there there was a reason for putting Axe Hand into development initially because I was tasked with catching up with putting all of the VODs online. Yeah, we and were real behind. That was yeah. a a real uh, slog of a process normally because it involved loading it into QuickTime Player and finding the cut points manually, which would involve either scrubbing through it or watching it at, at a certain speed and. Find the endpoint. Find all the cut it. Find yeah. the out point. Cut it out. Move on to the next one. Then save it. Wait for it to finish saving. Otherwise, it's going to chug too long. And just being able to automate the cutting out of the commercials speeds things up immensely. Because mm -hmm. we could have just put, just taken the VOD and been like, "All right, upload it to YouTube." And bleh, bleh, you know. And then if you go try to watch a video on YouTube, then you're sitting there for like maybe ten minutes before it starts. Chapters didn't exist on mm -hmm. YouTube at this point. And, you know, so you got to, like, skip ahead. And then the person's like, all right, I'm going to go on a quick two-minute break. And 15 minutes, 15 minutes later, later, they're not back yet. You know, and you're like, oh, okay. Just, you know, like, skip through. So we were like, no, no, we want to cut all that out if this is going up on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And what that meant was, I don't remember. We're like, what, eight months behind? Like, I don't have no idea how far behind we, we yeah, were. Yeah, we got, we got real behind. We were real that, in the weeds, point, yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, gradually gradually working our way uh, back into figuring, yeah, try, trying to get it back. And then, obviously, then that... Uh, eventually passed over to uh, Heather. Right. Doing it now. Keeping us much more current. <laughs> and we've heard this a lot talking to people in this podcast, this sort of process of integrating into Loading Ready mm -hmm. Run because, you know, we, we tend to be a pretty uh, uh, flexible uh, in terms of, you know, when people work and all this stuff. Right. Obviously, a lot of people... A lot of the times, you know, a, a regular job, a sort of normal job, is not that flexible. And so, you know, there isn't, you can't just be like, oh, I'm, you know, doing, you know, 10 hours a week for Loading Ready Run, and I'll do 30 hours a week for the job, and then I'll slowly, like, oh, I'll just start doing mm, 15, less, and then 35, you know, and, and, like, just slowly work my way over. Like, there, most most jobs don't have that kind of flexibility mm -hmm. to them. And so there is this aspect, and we, we talked about this a little bit when we were talking to, to, to Bij and Heather, is that we were at a point where we knew that, you know, we had Graham and myself and, uh, and James and Kathleen, and we sort of knew that we needed at least one more full-time person. Mm. Right. And the kinds of things that that person, and to, to do sort of non non creative well right. to do some of the like administration stuff yeah because it's probably not a surprise that you know graham and i are not that good at that <laughs> and so you know i remember that like we were in this position where uh you know we had a bunch of people 
working for you know doing doing work for us uh who were very professional people and were like this would be great except they have jobs and like we can't you know we can't compete with like a government <laughs> job like we can't say here's the your your track for the yeah. next 20 years here's your benefits here's plan here's your benefits yeah. plan like yeah, I mean, we have benefits plan stuff but but you know we the kinds of uh the kind of security that you can have in in cer certain types of jobs yes. we're like we can't you know uh, they they probably shouldn't leave their job and work for us i had, <laughs> like we we get that <laughs> So, so there was definitely there 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 was definitely a point, in, you know, it, it worked out. We end, uh, that, um, uh, you know, the way Bija's, um, uh, the his uh, contract at Uvic mm -hmm. ended up ending, and it worked out well for that. But and of course now, both both of you are working for us more, not mm -hmm. not full time, no. still. I guess the as as time has gone, what what has that transition? been like mm. i guess it's an interesting one uh, gore do you have anything well when we moved here you were starting to shift into streaming mm. which right. other than the filming has a bit more structure to it it's just like this is my time slot i show up and do the thing i did the heather method of joining my partner on his stream until i got a little more exposure and did a little bit more eventually and then uh in 2018 at the beginning i quit my full-time job due to burnout and now i'm just kind of like part-time doing streaming mostly and now and and i mean you and ian were also doing streaming like tilty house yeah doing your own streaming as well still clear. mostly just ian doing doing yakuza <laughs> games uh i haven't for a few years but oh. I, I plan to get back into it <laughs> but you're still doing podcasting as well. i'm doing my own podcasting because i can't stop Sup, Earthlings. Hey, I'm <laughs> Princess Dragon Mom. I'm going to take over the world. You all got to be my slaves or I'll kill you. I would just like to throw in something here that just occurred to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can we assume that George R. R. Martin? No, we cannot. <laughs> this is not where the mother of dragons came from, Josh. Won't stop. <laughs> and I, I guess because of your background in the video game industry it seems like you're 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 the one who's always like on the whatever the ear to the ground <laughs> on like this is the new oh this yeah is the new indie game or the new interesting title that you guys that everyone should yeah. check out yeah but now steam gives me those stats it's like you've played 100 games this year i'm like oh no that's only steam <laughs> <laughs> oh no two Three, as long as ATO doesn't start giving stats, you'll probably be okay. Oh. <laughs> For me, it's been, it's been interesting because I've been trying to maintain a full-time employment of some sort mm. uh, continuously as someone who likes to be able to live in a place with a roof and whatnot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. but, <laughs> uh, so yeah, it, it's been interesting trying to balance the, uh, the, the work with Loading Ready Run with, with that. Uh, with that. It, was a lot e well, it was easy when it was uh, more piecemeal work with the Métis Nation when I was still moving here, but then I moved into a role with Elections BC. And uh, let me tell you, uh, when you're looking for a flexible job, do not work for a organization that has a set event every four years that is their entire reason d'etre. Mm. <laughs> because you are very much on call for a lot of that. Yeah, I, I remember during, during election season, uh, like during the actual like BC election, mm -hmm. you know, oh, it's election season coming up. Uh, you know, you were you were working real hard. Oh yeah, I, I like to joke that I, I have three jobs here. Well, not here, but in in Victoria, I've got my full time job with uh, the government with uh, Open School BC, doing layout there, and I still love doing layout. In design is what I want to pilot every day. Uh, but to come here and work with uh, Loading Ready Run in the evenings, which is incredibly creatively fulfilling. Get to do streams, get to do sketches, get to do uh, light editing every now and then. And uh, then, you know, running a home, cooking food, managing, uh, <laughs> cleaning, managing what goes on there. I, th I thought your third job would be taking care of the crows. Oh, yeah, I think that, there's that too. <laughs> but homemaker's a real job. It yeah. takes, yeah, takes time. He's, the, he's made friends with a local group of birds. That can be an entire segment on its own. Yeah. Let me pitch you a series later. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Those of us who don't 
have a uh, 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 sort of nine to five mm-hmm. corporate job, uh, you know, there's there's the stuff with like, you know, flex days mm-hmm. and things, right? And so we know that that is a thing. And so we'll be like, hey, we need, you know, we need to shoot this. Is would this be something that like could Ian do? Could Ian be involved in this? Yeah. He's got <laughs> flex days, right? Yeah. That's a thing. <laughs> Whatever that, that could, means. What, could, uh, what are those? Those those means that he can sometimes do stuff. So I know sometimes we're like, "Hey, do you, th- this would be great," and you're like, uh, uh, "I can't be there because yeah. I have to work." We're like, "Right, right, yeah. work." I'm very happy with the amount of accommodations that occur on <laughs> a lot of these projects, but. It's funny on the other side of things, which, uh, when you're like, oh, you know, like I have that, like I have that, I can come in that Monday. Like what? Why? That's a holiday. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. And the rest of us are like, oh, is it? It's Victoria. Day. Oh, mm-hmm. oh, well, good for Victoria. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Stat holidays. They don't happen on the internet. So it's true. they don't happen in real life either. I even no. ran into that working in Alberta while living in BC because like family days on a different day. So they'd be like, why aren't you here? I'm like, it's a stat holiday. And they're like, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> we years ago, uh, this is, I don't think I mentioned this story, but this is from the period of time when I was working at the tech startup. This was after there had been some executive shakeup and the executives now all lived in Seattle. It was like someone former of Microsoft and former of Starbucks, and uh, they all lived in Seattle, and they the company had gone through different hands, and the rest of us were all just like, what the hell is happening upstairs, right? And it was Christmas, and typically, Boxing Day is not a day when people are expected to do stuff. We we do our Boxing Day stream because we just we hang out, which is it's entirely optional, by the way. Uh, but we like to you know hang out and have food, and we do our little stream and everything, and people enjoy that, and it's like a fun thing that we do. But if you're working like a tech job or a corporate job or whatever, generally, while not strictly speaking a stat holiday, commonly Boxing Day is not a day of yes. work, right? And uh, and they were like, all right, so yeah, you get Christmas off, obviously, and then you're back the next day, and we're all like, well. Hang on. <laughs> and they 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 thought we were and I quote a bunch of lazy Canadians. Wow. <laughs> because we were like, well, typically, you know, people in his so some of the some of the more senior people in the Victoria office sort of, you know, took the brunt of that where they were like, okay, I'll phone them. I'll phone I'll phone them. I'll phone them. And like <laughs> called in and were like, "Hey, look, you've you got to give these people boxing we, day. They won't be happy." You have to you have to just uh uh you have to appeal to the stereotypes. Be like, look, we'd love to come into work, but our the dog sleds don't operate on the on on Boxing Day. They yeah. had, I mean, we had a snow one. We talked about it earlier about how Victoria shuts down in the snow, right? We had like a foot of snow overnight, mm. right? And so some people who lived further afield were like, I can't, I can't get to the office, Literally. and working remotely was like not nearly so common in those days. And they were like, where the hell are people? And we're like. Literally can't. The buses aren't running. the The roads aren't plowed. It's they're not like they're not screwing around. They can't get to the office. And the 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 these executives from Seattle fucking no concept of how this could possibly happen. I'm just like, why doesn't your driver take you? You know that yeah, kind yeah. of disassociated <laughs> nonsense. And we're just like, oh boy. It, it's funny you bring up Christmas specifically, or mm. and Boxing Day rather, because one of my favorite memories again of working here was one of those first Christmases. I think I think it might have actually been the first one we were here in uh, 2014. You and I on Christmas morning, on actual Christmas Day, yeah. yes, yeah, at like 7 a.m. going out to take these shots of a dead Victoria downtown. Oh, right for the Rumble for the start of the Loading Ready Rumble too. Yep. Yeah. It was like some real 28 Days Later nonsense. I've never seen downtown Victoria so empty. And I probably never would have seen it like that. It was really cool. So yeah, it was because I think, because Ian had a car. And I was like, (laughs) I was like, hey, can someone take me downtown with this, with the camera? I just got to get, it'll take like 15 minutes. And it was quick, but it got some really cool shots to use for the beginning of the Rumble. Yeah, just like abandoned downtown Victoria. It was really neat. There was the like I Horner stream. Use your B button to rescue the children. The space children. 
Uh, and then at, at a certain point, we decided that we didn't want to, the, the, the sort of individual streams wasn't the best idea. So we sort of moved into a different system with the streams. Um, and we started doing the uh, Tinker Tailor Solder Fry right. stream. There's a there's a thing we need to make with like a thing sticking out. Okay. I brought forbidden knowledge. Uh, ooh. Uh, Reader's Digest. Wow. Woodworking tips from a book. Wow. How did that sort of come? I mean, I guess mm -hmm. you wanted. I mean, how most streams start, you wanted to do Dude, that. Yeah. I, and I wanted to do that because of. Uh, a history in my life of, uh, I'm a 4-H alumni. Mm. Uh, and uh, some of you out there may know what that is. It's a youth group uh, internationally for generally agricultural work. You know, you, you learn how to uh, do animal husbandry. You can uh, you can take care of a cow for a year and then sell it off. It's a way of teaching uh, leadership responsibility and skills to youth. Uh, but it, of course, it extends out into things like photography, science, rocketry. It's it's for everything, not just agriculture. But, but sort of uh, hands-on, like practical Stuff. Exactly. For the four H's, by the way, head, heart, health, and hand ah. of, of how one is going to serve their community I through would have these. Failed that trivia orders. question. <laughs> mm. But that's so that that's baked into my blood. One of the mottos of four H is learn to do by doing. And so I wanted to bring that sort of uh, that that spirit, that message to a greater audience over the internet. That hey, let's try to do something. There, there were a lot of things at that point. It's like a let's play was a big right. idea at that point. I thought, you know, let's not aim for success. I mean, let's aim for success, but we don't necessarily have to hit that. What's important is that we're trying, we're, we're learning as we're doing. Mm. And uh, I'm really happy with uh, a lot of the stuff we've done on the program. It's, we've had failures, we've had successes, we've had some very long drawn out projects, but I, uh, I really, I'm really proud of that program and uh, really proud of bringing people on and getting them involved and doing yeah. things too. I feel like it's gone through, you know, sort of uh, different, different, ch slight changes and sort of tone, mm -hmm. I guess. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I, I, uh, I, I personally uh, enjoy it too. I think it, it's a nice thing to sort of expand the, the scope of what, uh, in particularly in the case of streaming, sort of what Loading Ready runs streaming along with, you know, AFK and uh you know finite paper fight and so so it's not just like video game uh stuff uh and then also uh the art the can't, can't draw horses can't draw horses club can't draw horses club was uh an excuse to finally bite the bullet and try some stuff just make like little bits of incremental progress oh my sandwich has arrived can't draw horses club of course is your 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 art stream mm hmm so, what, what 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 was the impetus for that? I would like to learn how to draw, and I have no reason to practice. <laughs> Often there's a fair amount of debate about the names of new streams. You were like super, <laughs> the Can't Draw Horses Club, you like that. That was there you, from the beginning. Yeah, you knew that was going to be the name. Build yeah. a stream around that. Mm -hmm. That was a friend in high school. We used to like sit in a circle and joke and be like, we're in Can't Draw Horses Club, we've got jackets. And we didn't actually have jackets, but the the name has just been in my head. And I I asked them if I, I could use it, and I, <laughs> they wouldn't. They weren't upset. <laughs> I, I think horses are 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 considered considered sort of notoriously difficult. I remember my brother in 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 like elementary school. They had to draw a horse, and my brother was being very. Uh, 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 uncooperative and like he didn't like the teacher or whatever, and so uh, he just drew like the butt of the horse, like the back end <laughs> of the horse. I think because they were like, you could draw, you know, just a part of the horse if you want. So he just did the butt, the, yeah, the, the horse's ass, <laughs> yeah, yeah. People send me now just like comic panels and things that are just jokes about how horses are hard to draw. Like there's just memes. Nice. Yep. Their knees are weird. <laughs> Bags of meat on fingers, aren't they? Yep. They probably think your knees are weird. <laughs> probably. I, don't know. I guess so. Well, I mean, actually, their knee is higher up. Like, they have a really short femur, so it's, like, in their butt. And then the rest is just ankle. Wow, that's, thanks. That's why it bends that way. Oh, I hate it. Huh. Mm -hmm. We mentioned earlier the sort of you being the one with the ear to the ground on new indie games and stuff, which I assume 
is helpful for the other show that you're involved in a lot, which is Talking Simulator. Oh, Gekuru, yes. It is No Nut November, that's why. Oh, yeah. Everyone no made nut it November. illegal yeah. to nut yeah, in November, no... even, even the abbot. Yep. No Nut November dates back to the 12th century, actually, when when foraging your your pigs on nut uh, was forbidden yep. on, on the Lord's land. Mm -hmm, quite, because yeah. then I get to sort of show people the variety and scope of what you can do in a game and like maybe what you shouldn't do. What... I, li I like those lessons. What, yeah, what makes a good talking simulator game? A game that tries something. Mm. Like a lot of games, they're just, they, the, someone else has already done all the work to solve how that game should work. Like if you want to make a match three game, this is how it does. But if you want to make a game about like an existential crisis, how do you do that? How do you communicate through visual interactive elements and audio what it's like to doubt your existence or be afraid of death or things like that? You know, fun stuff. You know, it, it's it's funny because it's the same it's the same thing that uh, Paul and I used when we were doing Unskippable. It's the mm -hmm. same thing that Alex and I find when we're doing Watch and Play is the sincerity is important. Mm -hmm. If someone makes a game where it's like, ha ha, I'll be the meme game and check out my hilarious comedy, that's so just profoundly irritating to play on Watch oh. and Play. And it's not it's not enjoyable and it's not funny. It's never funny when they're like, ha ha, look at what a meme lord I am. But when someone is like, no, no, this is my opus. This or, is like I'm yeah, pouring yeah. I'm pouring everything into yep. the world building of this game and it's so bad <laughs> and it's like oh but oh but you're you have so much yep. to you have so much going on in your head you you currently are wildly unfocused this game is hilarious to play for the wrong reasons mm -hmm. You got to try again. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. You want something like, or not even like, like a meme game where they're like deliberately being funny. There's also just like games where you know it's just like an asset flip or whatever, and you're just like, yeah, it's like, oh, okay. it's just there's no passion, there's no vision. Yeah, there's you're not doing anything interesting with this game, even if it is sort of competent. Yeah, it's like, just like you know. I, I do firmly believe that games like asset flips have value in the culture, and that like you have to make garbage. Right. You have to make a lot of garbage. You have to oh, have yeah. the tools to make yeah. just absolute trash in order to learn the lessons to make the good things. I mean, so many times on Watch and Play, Alex and I have been like, all right, look, this is a fine school project. Or like, this is right. a great learning mm -hmm. experience. You shouldn't be selling it for $5. You shouldn't or, even be selling yeah. it. You should be doing it and learning from it and then making something better. But you should not be charging people money for this. <laughs> or if you're coming up with a game... If you're coming up with an interesting concept for a game or what you think is an interesting concept that isn't, you know, the art direction and the stuff, then, then like, you know, it's like, okay, I'll just load in a bunch of assets that I grabbed because that's not the part I'm interested in. You have to, you have to have something there. Yeah. It's hard to make games. It's hard to find collaborators to work with. If you're like a programmer, finding an artist that'll do stuff for free because mm -hmm. you have no money mm -hmm. is just hard. It's interesting because a lot of what's being said right now is a lot of what I love about loading Ready Run in general is that we are open to making these sorts of things that are maybe newer or people mm -hmm. aren't doing yet with the Loading Ready Live, with the Tinker Tailor, with the Gantor Horses Club. There, at the time, these were not common ideas on Twitch. Question number two. If your friend could be any internal organ, which one would they be? Rocco. Clearly, given the profession we're in, he's going to pick the gonads. Makes sense to me, I suppose. Hephaestus, what's your answer? You love touching skin. You're right, I do. Yes. Yeah. I mean, still, no one on Twitch is doing stuff like Loading Ready Live, mm -hmm. right? Which is, I, which, which I, I love that no one else is really doing that sort of thing. But yeah, that's, that. I love that too. I love being able to be like, I don't know, this is a different thing. Let's try. It, it puts us in the situation where like loading ready run is basically always a statistical outlier for things, yep. which is fine. But well, it is always like, oh, but how do we? Oh, okay. I guess there's no support for what we're trying to do. There are 78 organs in the human body, so the odds are not on my side. I will guess and say the 
descending colon. But everything is also being made with that passion that you, you talk about. Mm. And you can see it and you can feel it. And I think it resonates with the audience, which is what keeps that community and, together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, that's something that I've always thought about with, I mean, especially with the streams, because streaming is sort of a, a it's such a sort of recurring thing, mm -hmm. is that I, I've always felt that the the excitement and sort of interest and uh, uh, desire of the people involved is one of like the most important thing. Like if there, if we have a stream, if we had a stream that was viewed by a lot of people and successful, but the people involved, the, the, the performers involved in it weren't into it. Uh, I, I would be fine with canceling that. Like it's, because you know if it's not fun to do then it's uh, there's it, it sort of saps uh mm -hmm. power from ever for everything else and, and i think and i think the audience sees that like i think like uh crossing the streams is a good example mm. god i hated that <laughs> oh we're doing it two more Let's times do it <laughs> there's nothing more excruciating than trying to put my mind in the mind of the common man <laughs> 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 is that that's that's a that's a show that has sort of come in and out of mm -hmm. usage um and originally like we were doing it you know for a long time and then it kind of fell off and it came back during the pandemic but uh and it kind of fell off because we found that you know when we were going like okay what do we want to do for this week for crossing the streams there'd be like two you know maybe one or two people would put up their hand as like mm -hmm. oh this game looks kind of interesting but nobody was like really like gung-ho for it if we don't want to do it, there's other stuff that can go in that slot. Yeah, like, let's not. We don't have to do it. Yeah. Let's not push this thing. Uh, and then, and yeah, and then I mean, in that the in pandemic that, honestly revitalized it because in, in that case, I think yeah, I think the <laughs> pandemic and and allowed us to sort of uh, reevaluate what it could be, and you know, the idea of that 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 it can be done uh, quite well as a, as a as a remote stream in some cases or. You know, not all, not everything has to be in Studio A. Sometimes it can be Studio C. Sometimes it can be remote. Sometimes, and you know, that it can be a lot more flexible than we were originally thinking about mm -hmm. it. Yeah. It also helps there's a few more people around now. So if it's like, hey, do we have four people that want to play, you know, Valorant? You know, I sure don't, but there's four people who do, right? Mm, right. So it's like, oh, okay, great, cool. We can do that. And so, yeah, when we, when we transitioned back into doing AFK stuff, we were like, oh, let's keep crossing the streams around because people are having a lot of fun with that mm -hmm. so that was nice oh god we were talking earlier uh when we were talking about the the, the concept of this podcast mm. about the escapist news networks uh con uh con not the escapist news network uh the escapist uh, film festival yeah that i think we were both contemporaries uh in right this is you, something I only found out about a few years ago. Yes. So you, you entered the Escapist? I had also entered the Escapist uh, film festival because I was fresh back from Japan at the time. Yep. And thought, hey, Ooh. maybe this is time for me to branch out into video because I was, I was doing video podcasts in uh, Japan and thought, hey, let's, uh, let's try doing a new show about Japan. Just short little comedic uh, looks into Japanese headlines like uh, fluorescent tube wrestling. <laughs> and uh, and the uh, uh, the robotics competitions that occur mm. there, and uh, did it in the style of a nineteen uh, fifties news radio with the whole black and white, the flying across the pond from uh, north. Hey there, Joe. What do you know? Here's some news you can use. News from Japan. <laughs> Didn't get picked up. Mm -hmm. the, the probably for the best, but <laughs> the fun thing is like now that I. Now that, like you know, we we know Russ pretty well, who was the mm -hmm. the uh, uh, video content guy at the Escapes at the time. Mm -hmm. I know that he was probably like super into the like fifties radio host thing. Yeah, <laughs> oh, no. like that's totally his aesthetic. I bet, yeah, I bet he was probably like, "This is great," and the publisher is never going to go for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is ex that is one hundred percent my brand. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Noted, noted, humorless goblin, the publisher of that place at the time. Uh, do you still have that uh, I do pilot have, somewhere? I have the clip, and uh, I'll I'll file it away in my head right now to to uh, forward it to the editors, <laughs> pending its <laughs> its appropriateness for broadcast. Shall we say? <laughs> 
Well, great. Um, anything else either of you would like to like to add? Any other? Yeah, I don't know. Stories about loading ready run or whatever. Anything mm-hmm. that pops into your mind? I think we've got most of it off the top of my head, but yeah, no, it's been fun. Stay tuned. We've Great. got more stories in the future, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Good. Well, excellent. Well, thank you very much for joining us, uh, Corey and Ian. Thank you. Um, you can. Where can people find other stuff that you're doing outside of Loading Radio Run? Where are the, these podcasts you mentioned? Tiltyhouse.com. Or T-I-L-T-Y dot H-O-U-S-C if you don't want to use the uh, normal TLDs. You actually have Tilty.house? Yes. Mm-hmm. Excellent. That's that, that's great. But yeah, you can check out uh, the uh, Hey Check It Out, the, the podcast uh, of good movies. Uh, we've got also links to the Late Night Dub Fight archives there and uh, all our social cool. as that changes. Sweet. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, thanks for joining us and uh, thank you for watching uh, this episode of the 20th Anniversary Podcast. And it's uh, brought to you as always by you and your support of our Patreon at patreon.com slash loadingreadyrun. And we'll talk to you next episode. Bye, everybody.